Let me call the City Commission meeting October 3rd, 2022 to order. I'm going to ask the City Clerk to please call the roll. Mayor Weissman? Here. Vice Mayor Landman? Here. Commissioner Friedland? Present. Commissioner Joel? Here. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Here. Commissioner Narotsky? Present. Commissioner Shelley? Here. Mr. Wasson? Here. And Mr. Myers? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you so much. Because I know he's just dying to do this. Alec, I'm going to ask you to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, and one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'm going to ask the city manager if there are any additions or deletions to the agenda. Thank you, Mayor. I have one item that I'd like to carry over to a future meeting, and that's a second reading on ordinance, in ordinances item number eight, administrative review on alcohol beverage permits. Okay, so item eight. In the agenda, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Got it. Thank you. Okay, we've got a number of presentations tonight, and we've got a couple of people that are running a little bit late, but we're going to start, if it's all right with my principals, okay, is it all right that we start with the schools first, because I kind of have it that some of our kids have other places to go tonight, and they're not staying for the duration, so please let me call um, Dr. I'm calling Dr. Tricala from ACES to please come up and bring whoever you want with you. Aviva? Right. Aviva, yes. Thank you, Mayor. And, and we're very grateful to be able to go first. So it's my pleasure to introduce eighth grade student Aviva Zippin, who's going to give the update for ACES. Is she the new principal? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Assistant. Right, Bob. She's close. Good evening, Mayor, City Manager, and Commission. My name is Aviva Zippin, and I have been a proud ACES Eagle for six years. I am truly honored to be representing ACES to share our school report with you. First, I am sure everyone joins me in gratitude that the worst of Hurricane Ian did not reach us here at home. At the same time, we all share deep regret for the tragedy that continues to unfold on the west coast of Florida. ACES is preparing to support by focusing on the families and staff of sister schools within CSUSA, many of whom have been a direct support for ACES for many years. Giving back remains a core element of the ACES focus on developing the whole child, as well as providing experiences to make learning come to life. Recently, our fourth grade students had a visit from two scientists who connected their careers to what the students are learning in their science classes. Red Ribbon Week will be taking place starting on October 24th. During this week, ACES students affirm their commitment to remaining drug-free. Officer Manny, along with our middle school leadership, has planned a week of dress-down days and contests to get students excited about living healthy lifestyles. We are also excited about our second annual Trunk or Treat event, which will take place on October 27th from 5 to 7. We hope to see you there. And in athletic news, our boys' flag football and girls' volleyball teams have kicked off their seasons. This Thursday, both teams play their next home game with our boys' flag football team at 1-0 and girls' volleyball team is at 2-0. Good luck to our Eagles. Our families are being provided with more opportunities than ever to support ACEs and their children. Families are able to support classroom support classrooms, decorate bulletin boards, and help manage arrival traffic, among other opportunities. Next Thursday, we will hold a family middle school curriculum presentation. And later this month, Dr. Turkala will invite families on campus to discuss adolescent brain development. We have partnered with a local he mental health company that will also present to families 
this week on building and maintaining strong family relationships. It was a pleasure to have the opportunity to share just a few of the many great things happening at ACES, where excellence is the expectation, not the exception. Thank you for your continued support of our amazing school. Have a great evening. Thank you, Aviva. Thank you, thank you so much, Aviva. Go on, Dr. Takala. Perfect, thank you. Oh, I was, if you had any questions for me, I'm here. Nope. Any commissioners awesome. have any questions for Dr. Trakala? She covered it all. She's great. Thank you guys so much. I think you're getting a promotion, Aviva. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. McKee from Sofer High School. Good evening. Happy New Year to everyone who just recently celebrated Rosh Hashanah. Um, it's an honor to be here. That's a tough act to follow. I mean, it was hard enough with Alec doing the pledge, and now Aviva, a wonderful presentation. Um, I've already explained to her what her progression will be as she matriculates to Don Sofer High School. She's challenging us because she's already in pre-calculus in the eighth grade. So we'll, we'll work it out, though. I promise, Aviva. Um, so we're excited. I always inundate you with academic information. I have one quick piece of information that I'm very excited about. 66%, uh, over 66% actually right now of our senior class, so 121 out of 185 students, have already earned 100% Bright Future scholarships. They've met all the academic standards. So that's up about uh, 21 from our last conversation because of the alternate way of qualifying through becoming a National Hispanic Scholar. So we're really excited about that. And we're gonna have a presentation. Ms. Norris, my presenter, I'm not sure if she was in pre-calc in eighth grade, but she's very tall. So we might have the, the tallness category dominated, but she's our athletic director, head boys varsity basketball coach. Um, she's gonna talk about- Put it down a little, Jeff. It's getting very garbled. Is it garbled? Okay. Yeah, now it's better. All right, thank you. She's gonna talk about our athletic program and some of the events happening there. Um, and before she does, I just wanna say real quickly, we're very excited about competing in other areas as well. Um, we're putting together our first competitive drone team this year. Um, the robotics team is together. They have registered so far for five robotics competitions. And our chess team is, is next week having their, actually this Thursday, excuse me, their first meeting. So we'll be competing in many arenas. Uh, most prominently in athletics. That's something that happens almost every day of the week. We have some athletic competition. I have to say, I think the most exciting event of my time so far at Don Sofer was when we played Crosstown Rival Prop in volleyball. It was a phenomenal game, a uh, phenomenal match, I should say, and our girls actually won, so on the varsity level, which was really impressive. But Pac Jim, um, the students were providing awesome support, the parents as well, and it's just a, a thrilling night. And you're gonna tell us more about athletics. This is Emily Norris, our athletic director, and again, head boys varsity basketball coach. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. I guess I have to hold it too, because I'm tall. I was gonna squat, but that's not gonna work. <laughs> All right, for those of you who don't know me, thank you, Dr. McKee, I'm Emily Norris. Second year at Don Sofer as the athletic director. Um, had a lot of fun, so first what I wanna do is I wanna start with overall updates for our athletic program. Um, so this year, we have a fully functioning live stream camera in our gym. Um, only boys volleyball last year got to have it for a few games, but this year, any sports that take place in the gym get to use it. Um, all you have to do is log into our network and you can live stream games anytime, anywhere for anything happening in the gym. Um, any other event can also be live streamed in the gym. The camera just obviously has to be pre-programmed. Um, other things, we have official athletic cushion chairs with our school logo on it. We have a, um, official scoreboard coming in the middle of December. So I'm super excited about utilizing those, um, equipment tools in the gym. Um, we also have decorated the walls of the team gym with our team banners this year. So our fall sports are hanging right next to our American flag on the gym walls. Um, and lastly, this is our last year as being an independent school. Oops, sorry. Oh, you're gonna do the visual aid, okay. Um, so this is our last year being an independent school, which I'm super excited about. Um, at the end of this year, we're finally gonna be placed into a district and be able to compete for district championships and hopefully move on to the state level for some of our athletic programs. 
So just a quick overview. I want to go by each season because a lot is happening. So for our fall sports, um, this year we have boys and girls cross country. We have girls JV and varsity volleyball, and we added boys and girls golf this year. Um, golf is actually undefeated. Um, they have three matches left in their season, but they're doing absolutely fantastic. Um, for our volleyball team, we have finally started to play a super competitive schedule. We've added um, Monsignor Pace. We've added American Heritage, um, Coral Springs, kind of some top-notch um, opponents for us so we can build our programs in that way. My favorite thing happening October 13th, which I'd like to invite you all to, is our very first senior night event. October 13th at 5.30, um, we're taking on Franklin Academy, the girls varsity volleyball team. I will be losing seven volleyball seniors this year. Um, and we have our individual banners for all of our seniors. So this is Taryn, I brought Taryn with me today. So all of my seven seniors will be represented on individual banners this year. Um, volleyball just gets extra hype because they're the first sport um, on court to have a senior night. Um, of course, obviously, basketball, soccer, everything else will have a senior night as well. And just a quick note, that's Taryn Shine, you all know from the Youth Advisory Council, a phenomenal student, competing now for valedictorian. Uh, so please come out and cheer for her and the rest of the girls on senior night. It's going to be an exciting night. Uh, moving on to winter sports, we have boys JV and varsity basketball, also play a very competitive schedule. Um, the boys hold near and dear to my heart. Basketball is my passion. That's why I've taken them on um, coaching last year and this year as well. Um, boys and girls soccer, easily the most competitive sport we have at our have at our school. Um, actually, our boys soccer program tied the state winning team last year, um, St. Brendan. So we're hoping for a good rematch and hopefully an undefeated season for them as well. Um, and we're actually adding girls basketball um, this winter. So I'm very excited about that. They'll compete, be competing at the varsity level. Um, and lastly, moving into spring sports, um, we have boys volleyball, we have girls flag, which is easily one of the most popular sports among the girls. Um, last year we had about 40 girls come and try out for flag football, so that was super exciting to see all of that. And we have tennis still in the building phase, but you know that small group of kids that love tennis enjoy coming out for that, and we're going to be adding boys and girls track this year. So hopefully it gives our cross-country kids another opportunity to run in the springtime, and those kids who maybe don't like running three miles for a race can run a quick little sprint um, to show off their skill set. Um, but other than that, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share some exciting things in my domain. Thank you so much. Um, Emily or Dr. McKee, we're, the city is going to have a little bit of a problem on October 13th. We're all committed for another engagement. So again, if it has to be, it has to be. And if there are other schools involved, we certainly understand. But if possible, will you look into it? Because yes. I think there'd be a lot of people up here that would like to come and root on our kids. <laughs> um, we have our last home game of the season, so for fall sports, we can only play up to October 14th because we're not in a district yet. So we do have one last home game on the 14th, which is the very next day. I don't know if you all are more free on that day, but it's the same exact time, 5.30. Um, I just know it's a Friday night, so. Um, let, let me do this. Just give me a thumbs up. The 13th is the marketing council. Okay, so he, they're suggesting they have a game scheduled for the 14th, and they could do everything they were planning on yeah, the just, 14th. Yeah, we just move it a day Yes later. or no? Just give me hands up so they know what to do, people. Thumbs up from Billy Joel. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep, and over here. We're good. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to the other coaches um, and ADs and let them know that we're going to shift it if... You guys are all down to support our students on the 14th. You got it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we're going to go back to the regular agenda, and I'm first going to ask Cambrell Miller to please come to the podium. And let me shake your 
You know, every once in a while you hear about someone that just did something because they're a good person. They never expected recognition. This was the last thing that this gentleman, Mr. Miller, ever expected. But let me just read this to you. On Friday, August 19th, 2022, the new, as in brand new, front desk supervisor of Mystic Point Tower 600, Cambrell Miller, noticed that one of the residents that stops by the desk each morning to say hello had not passed by since Wednesday morning. Mr. Miller went to the resident's apartment and knocked. From behind the door, the resident yelled for help. Mr. Miller called fire rescue from his cell phone and called Sonny Levitt for backup. Together, they got the key to the unit, opened the door, and discovered the resident was laying on the floor and could not get up. Mr. Miller stayed on the phone with fire rescue until the unit arrived to pick up and take the resident to the hospital. If it wasn't for Cambrell Miller caring enough to check on a resident that he's used to seeing on a daily basis, things could have taken a real turn for the worse. We need more residents like you. We thank you for what you did. And this is in recognition of, I know it was normal for you. Thank you. Oh, you thank you. Thank you. All right, let me ask commissions. Bring your proclamations and come down. We'll just do it from down here. Please, all can you? Try this one. Yeah, okay. Got it. Next on the agenda, we have a proclamation for a gentleman who serves our community in more ways than I could ever imagine. Um, he's been in our community a number of years now. He comes from Argentina. He has not to this date missed an opportunity to take part in everything we do in this city, including attending events at our high school and at ACES. He's made a real bridge between Aventura Turnberry Jewish Center and the city. And Rabbi Guido Cohn, could you please come up? It's an extra special pleasure. I didn't know that. Extra special pleasure as it is also my rabbi. So, this proclamation. Whereas Rabbi Guido Cohen joined us as a full member of this clergy team at the Aventura Turnberry Jewish Center in September 2017, and whereas since that time he has provided religious leadership and spiritual counsel to our diverse Jewish community in a warm and welcoming atmosphere through good times and bad. And whereas Rabbi Cohen has touched the hearts of those in our community through his teaching and thoughtful guidance and is an integral part of our many city events involving our residents and the greater community beyond the boundaries of Aventura. And whereas the city of Aventura would like to recognize Rabbi Guido Cohen for his dedication and commitment to being a force for good and for helping those within our community to strive to be the best people they can be. Okay, now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Enid Wiseman, as mayor and on behalf of the city commission of the city of Aventura, Florida, do hereby proclaim October 3rd, 2022, as Rabbi Guido Cohn Day. Wow. Yes, please. I, just, I was not expecting this. Uh, I would have called my grandmother and tell her to live stream <laughs> had I known. But I just want to say one thing to 
you know, to give you an idea of, of how much I love this city and those who lead the city. Elisa sent me an email last week saying, Enid Weisman wants you at the commission meeting next, meeting next week. There was something, I didn't read the whole email. I said, like, I'll be there. And this morning I was talking with a colleague and he said, is your sermon ready? And I said, my sermon is not ready for Yom Kippur. And I have a city commission meeting. And he said, like, what kind of mayor invites a rabbi the day before Yom Kippur to a meeting like that? And my answer was, and, and I'm being fully honest, you can check the facts. My answer was, I know that if I called any member of the city commission and tell them that I need them at my synagogue tomorrow, they will be there. And therefore, when they told me that Enid wanted me here, I couldn't say anything other than yes. So I'm very happy. I'm very proud of receiving this proclamation. Today, I actually exchanged some emails with some of you uh, in order to work on the Holocaust Remembrance Day for our teenagers at Don Software School that I'm now a proud parent of that, of that school. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and we'll continue working together. You are a blessing for our entire community. He wants a picture with all of us. Uh, yeah. I need to show this to my grandma. We don't yeah, block I don't block anybody. No, you don't, you don't block anybody. No, we need our room. Yes. Okay. I don't block anybody. Wow. Take a couple on your phone. My family's all here for you. Oh, my God. Never forget that. Yes. Thank you. Now Thank we get the professional you. one. Well done. Thank you, you so have this year? much. Yeah. Wait, 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 there's another camera. Oh, no, he hasn't got it. Never miss another camera. Come on, Ellie, doesn't come on. Feels like a bar mitzvah. <laughs> Worse. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great. Nobody Thank you. Thank you. Everybody stay. Wow. Yes, okay. Before I get started on this proclamation, I just want to say I attended one of the vaccination events and vaccinated my five-year-old daughter. So we have a lot to be thankful to this individual who is a proud father and a role model to many, many people who are sitting here today. So whereas Dr. Mark A. Saltzman, MD in hematology, oncology, and internal medicine physician with experience at treating an extensive variety of disorders and illnesses that affect adults, thereby helping to save countless lives. And whereas with over 49 years experience in the medical field, Dr. Saltzman has been affiliated with multiple hospitals in the area and served as medical director and principal investigator of Innovative Medical Research South Florida, a fully staffed clinical trial site. And whereas throughout his career, Dr. Saltzman has continuously provided medical care with a gentle, attentive demeanor showing genuine concern for his patients and their families. And whereas during the COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Saltzman was instrumental in providing vital vaccinations and boosters to the children, adults, and first responders in our community. And whereas the city of Aventura would like to recognize and thank Dr. Mark A. Saltzman for his dedication and commitment to the city of Aventura through his generous COVID-19 vaccination efforts. Now, now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Enid Wiseman, as mayor and on behalf of the City Commission of the City of Aventura, Florida, do hereby proclaim October 3rd as Dr. Mark A. Saltzman Day. Before you applaud, before you applaud, because I don't know how many of you know this. Not only did he vaccinate our entire police department, when children were allowed to be vaccinated, and I think Kimberly's here, yeah. we dressed up cartoon and movie super, uh, super characters. There were fun booths, there were food booths, and Mark and his staff and his gracious wife, Lynn Rose, vaccinated so many of our children that were eligible for that at the time. You're really one of our heroes, Mark. Thank you. I, I don't know how we say thank you to somebody who's given so much. Thank you so much. And if you want to say a word, it's yours. 
Uh, it's really a pleasure, and I have to thank the City Commission. Uh, this has been my life. Uh, I've been serving North Dade for 49 years. Uh, I'm very proud of this honor, proud to have uh, spent seven years running a free cancer screening program with the American Cancer Society and North Shore Hospital. We did weekly cancer screenings for the indigent people and also proud working through all the organizations here in the city of Aventura, the temples. We vaccinated 4,500 people to date. Uh, it's really been a pleasure. So I hope I can continue to work many more years and continue to serve this great city. Thank you so much. Okay, you know, starting back when COVID broke out, a group of us formed um, an organization called Aventura Heroes, and we collected money, and with the money, we bought lunch and dinner for police officers, our fire department, first responders, our teachers, um, and anybody's free to help me, and the hospital, okay, the hospital workers. Uh, we also did the workers at the assistant living facilities within the city. And one of the gentlemen that owns a restaurant in our city would never take a penny. And just recently, he provided a lunch that we did, we thought we were doing, for the teachers at ACES, welcoming them back to school. And once again, Edward and Shear would not take a penny from us. So I have a proclamation for him. He could not be with us tonight. We will deliver it to him, but I thought it was worthy of putting it on the record. Once again, the people in this city give with their hearts. They really and truly do. Oh, okay. And I, and I was reminded to say, and the name of his restaurant is Barrio Latino. So if you want good, um, good Latino food, Cuban, Mexican, Brazilian, he has it all. Okay, for the plug. And this one is particularly special to me. In eight years, you know, I get a phone call from one of these people or from somebody else who talks to one of these people and kind of says, you know, it would be nice if we gave a proclamation. And I made it a habit always to say yes. I mean, it's one of the best things a city can do to recognize 
the residents of the city. And this one, no one called me about. This one is mine. And I want to recognize, and it's two doctors tonight, Mark. I want to recognize Dr. Michael Braun, who has been practicing in our city for coming on three decades. An incredible physician, always there, was chief of the medical staff at the hospital, and that, that's when I got to know him. Um, just amazing. So let me read this. Whereas Michael J. Braun, MD, is a board-certified physician specializing in cardiology and internal medicine at his MD VIP affiliated practice located in the city of Aventura. And whereas, with over 25 years of experience in the medical field, Dr. Braun is affiliated with HCA Aventura Hospital and focuses on health maintenance with a comprehensive planning approach for his patients to address overall health and disease prevention. And whereas Dr. Braun has continuously gone above and beyond to provide the best health care for his patients through his professional and caring advice with compassion and devotion to learning new approaches to current health issues, and whereas throughout his career has provided a positive difference in the health of many living within Aventura. Whereas the city would like to recognize Dr. Michael J. Braun for his dedication and commitment to improving the health of his patients residing both in and outside of our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Enid Wiseman, as mayor and on behalf of the city commission of the city of Aventura, Florida, do hereby proclaim October 3rd, 2022 as Dr. Michael J. Braun Day. Did Chris leave? No way, he's right there. Yeah, uh, my arm, I got the flu shot. He gives the flu shot. <laughs> uh, my arm is still recovering. <laughs> no reaction. Do you want your family to come up? Um, sure. Sure, we'll take a picture. Come on. Nancy? Come on. These are the two women that got me here. For sure, literally and figuratively. And if you want to say something? I do. I'm just, first of all, I'm just glad it wasn't a sting operation for all the red light camera <laughs> to get me here. So thank you for that. No. Um, thanks. I just want to say one thing quickly. Enid, you've always been my biggest fan. I'm not sure why. I'm very blessed for that. And the truth is, I was sitting here, uh, I've underwhelmed compared to the other people who've been honored tonight, literally. The other people have really... But, but I have been a, a loyal Aventurian. I'm not sure if that's the right word. And I knew that my, no, 26 years ago. And every time my partners tried to move me out of Aventura, I said, this is the one, uh, the one line I won't cross. So this is my city. I live here now, work here. I'm very proud. I see all the great things you guys do. And Enid, you are, if I could measure even 10% of what you've done for the community, I'd be doing pretty good. So thank you. Thank you all. Keep up the good work. Howard, big shoes to fill. <laughs> Steve, you can have her back. Actually okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Take a picture with all the commissioners. Yeah. Come. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Amazing. Thank you. Come on up. 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 I know I'm okay. I don't block anybody. <laughs> Even Howard first, I guess. Okay, I want to thank all of you. The next item on our agenda 
is uh, the presentation plans for the Founders Day event, Kimberly Merchant. All right, good evening, Madam Mayor, city officials, ladies and gentlemen. The Founders Day celebration was developed by input from the Community Services Advisory Board, and it's my honor to be here today to present the program to you. The city of Aventura will celebrate 27 years of incorporation on Sunday, November 13th, from noon to five at Founders Park with the following activities and attractions. Toddler Town, which will consist of sensory stations, bubble stations, interactive music and dancing, along with an inflatable. Science and art stations will be a make and take, where you will uh, decorate your visors, create sand art, and also slime. We will have continuous bingo with prizes for all ages, airbrush tattoos, uh, interactive juggling, which is great for teens and also adults. Uh, balloon twisting, and for our football fans, we will have HD TVs where you can watch the Miami Dolphins take on the Cleveland Browns, the Aventura Police Department, along with the Aventura City of Excellence School, and Don Sofer Aventura High School will be on site. We will have a climbing wall, bungee jumping, where we'll have a total of eight stations, a 50 foot Ferris wheel, a nine hole miniature golf course. We will also have a 95 foot long super slide where three people can race down at a time. You can test your balancing skills on the rope ladder challenge. We will have a go gator roller coaster, which will be available for ages three to 10. We will have midway races, which will consist of wacky water and Kentucky Derby race, where you can win prizes also. We will have giant family board games, such as uh, giant Jenga, uh, connect four, and also ring toss. There will be photo opportunities on site for your favorite cartoon character, stilt walker, juggler, or even your favorite city staff. Uh, <laughs> we will also have tennis demonstrations and we will have food trucks on site for your dining pleasure. The community stage, we will host Aventura Star Finals, which is Aventura's very own talent show for all ages. The cartoon character sing-along, which is an interactive sing-along with your favorite cartoon characters. We'll have a magic show, the Encanto musical, which will be a musical review of all of the popular songs from the popular movie. Uh, karaoke, which will be for individuals or groups. Dance challenge, where uh, residents can come on stage and do their most popular dance moves with our dancers. Juggle Mania, which is a very high energy interactive juggling show. And of course, uh, Wacky Science will end our stage show. Here is a map of what the Founders Day will, uh, will look like. As you can see, Tyler Town is within the playground. Um, along the ball field is where we have our main stage. And then on the outer ends is all of our attractions and dining uh, tents and trucks will be in the parking lot. The transportation and parking plan, the Aventura Express shuttle bus will operate a residential only service to and from Founders Park, starting at 1130 and ending at 6 p.m. Parking will be available at the Government Center and also at 10X, which is the former Harbor Center, with continuous shuttle service to and from Founders Park. And now I will turn it over to Evan Ross, the Communications Director, to go over the marketing plan. So we've got a robust plan for uh, communications for Founders Day. Obviously, it's the biggest event the city does every year. Um, we want to make sure that we're getting the word out. So. The website and our monthly newsletter are automatics. Uh, Founders Day will be promoted aggressively uh, on both. Our social media, you'll see lots of content. You'll particularly see a lot of content the week prior as the build out occurs at Founders Park. It'll allow us to capture some fun video. Uh, I think we're gonna hang the uh, community services director off of a rock wall for one of them. Um, so there'll be all sorts of fun content to promote it. Um, 
as is normal, banners, uh, signs, posters. Uh, we'll also be utilizing the digital screens in the two freebie XLs to promote it for anybody who's riding on freebie. Uh, email blasts will go out. Uh, we'll send it out to the property managers. We'll also, I believe for the first time, be promoting the event to media, uh, hoping to get particularly some TV coverage of the event. Uh, it certainly has all of the elements that make for uh, good visuals for the local TV stations. Uh, our text message system, uh, which I think most of you are now signed up for uh, and continues to grow by the second today, um, will be another great tool to be able to promote it to people who've asked for these kinds of updates from the city. Um, there will be flyers distributed as normal uh, and we'll also be utilizing the property managers who we engage with regularly now to help promote it to all of their residents. So I believe last year was a little north of 7,000 attendees. Um, I imagine this year with COVID concerns having dissipated a little more uh, that that number uh, could be a bit higher. All right, thank you. Commissioner Friedland. I just want to suggest you have very large screens for that Dolphins game, <laughs> which unfortunately I'll be at instead of being at the event. Sorry. I'm going to ask that this be placed on a workshop so that we can go over more of the details and not take up commission time with it. We've always done it at a workshop in the past. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, the next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. I'm going to ask if any members of the commission or the city manager would like to move, remove an item from the consent agenda. No. Okay, then can I have a motion for approval of the items on the consent agenda made by Commissioner Friedland, seconded by Commissioner Shelley. Can I please ask the city clerk for a roll call vote? Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narosky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is zoning hearings. It's item number six, and it's a quasi-judicial public hearing. I'm going to request the city attorney to provide the procedures for the quasi-judicial hearing for item six. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, please be advised that the following item on the commission's agenda is quasi-judicial in nature. If you wish to object or comment upon the item, please inform the mayor when she requests public comments. An opportunity for persons to speak on the item will be made available after the applicant and staff have made their presentations on the item. All testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you refuse either to be cross-examined or be sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the commission to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the city clerk. I'm going to request that the city clerk swear in those wishing to offer testimony. If you will be speaking on this item, item six, I need you to stand, raise your right hand and be sworn in at this time. If you're making any public comments or anything on this item, I need you to be sworn in at this time. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give? It's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you. I'm going to request that the city clerk read the resolution. A resolution of the city commission of the city of Aventura, Florida, granting conditional use approval pursuant to section 31-143F of the city code of ordinances to allow one, a height of 26 stories and 295 feet for a multifamily residential building where the city code permits 25 stories and 250 feet. Two, a building in the RMF4 district to cast a shadow upon a property located within a business zoning district. Three, a density of 56 units per acre where the city code permits 45 units per acre. And four, a certified green building with a floor area ratio of 4.3 where the city code permits a floor area ratio of 2.0. All for the property located at 2785 Northeast 183 Street, providing for conditions of approval and providing an effective date. 
Thank you. Can I please have a motion for approval of the resolution? Made by Commissioner Joel, seconded by Vice Mayor Landman. I'm going to request that the Community Development Director review the item with us. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Kevin Klopp, Community Development Director. As you heard from the City Clerk, this is a conditional use approval request. Application number CUP 22070001, located at 2785 Northeast 183rd Street. I'll save, uh, well, I won't present a lot of pictures. I will save that for Mr. Adler, who is here representing the applicant. But I do have just this one picture to so show you the location of the property, uh, which are, you are familiar with. And you are familiar with this because uh, the project known as Tala Ventura has been before you at uh, workshop presentations in April and May and also at the local planning agency in June when the City Commission also adopted a few things on first reading. Those uh, few things went to second reading in July of 2022. Uh, the things that the City Commission adopted in July were an amendment to the future land use plan for this property to residential. Uh, you rezoned the property from business to uh, multifamily RMF4. And you also re uh, approved a revision to our uh, land development regulations to allow uh, properties to cast a shadow onto business owned property. That wasn't specific to this item, uh, but this item is uh, able to take advantage of that revision. So what you have tonight, as you heard from the clerk, is a request for uh, four conditional use approvals. Uh, I'll review them quickly again. 26 stories where 25 is allowed by right. Uh, to cast a shadow on a business owned property. Uh, density of 56 units per acre where 45 is allowed by right. And a floor area ratio of 4.3 pursuant to the city's green building program. The standards of review for a conditional use are in the code uh, section 3173. Uh, there are seven standards, all seven are met for this application. In general, the application is consistent with the comprehensive plan. It facilitates redevelopment of fallow land. There was a development there at one point, but it has been gone oh, maybe five years or so. Uh, public facilities are available to service uh, the use proposed, and the project provides orderly development in character with the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, the applicant did supply a traffic analysis in May of 2022 that was presented to you at workshop. Um, that analysis is more pertinent to the rezoning because that's where the real uh, change in the impact would come from. Uh, but for the record, uh, I'm mentioning that study because it uh, also is in the file for this, excuse me, conditional use re, uh, application. So with that, staff does recommend approval of the conditional use requests subject to the seven conditions listed in the resolution and staff report that you have. I do need to mention one edit to condition three that has been uh, discussed and agreed to by the city manager and the applicant, if the commission would so agree as well, to edit condition three, that's a contribution towards the city's freebie. Uh, as written, the first payment would be due on a date certain of September uh, 30th of 2023. Uh, because of the nature of development and you don't know when these projects are actually gonna get built, uh, the applicant is asked to tie that to the uh, temporary certificate of occupancy, which we've agreed to. So when the project is actually coming online is when they would start contributing to freebie. The other conditions, uh, just uh, to review them quickly, uh, there's a reference to the set of plans. So the project that uh, they've said they uh, will build is what they would build. Uh, a full traffic study needs to be done. So if there are any other traffic impacts, we'd make sure to get those addressed. Uh, there's an estimate of the impact fees that they would pay. Um, they also have to uh, meet school concurrency and pay school impact fees and come up with a ride sharing plan and a bicycle parking and storage plan. So those are the conditions uh, of approval that we recommend. And uh, the next steps, should you approve the conditional use, uh, the applicant has already uh, started the process of obtaining administrative site plan approval. That's the real details of the plan. Uh, this is uh, setting the parameters for the plan. And then we uh, get into the, the details, uh, soil erosion plan, those type of things uh, from this point forward. 
Uh, and I'm available for any questions, and I know Mr. Adler has a uh, presentation on behalf of the applicant. Let me put questions to you on hold for a minute, and let's let the applicant come up Absolutely. if they have any comments. While he's coming up, Kevin, let me just ask you, it came up the last time we discussed it, and it was LEED certification? Yes. The Can you address required, that? Required to have uh, uh, LEED certification. Mm -hmm. And what level? I believe silver. Florida Green Building uh, certification, so that's equivalent uh, to LEED certification. Okay. <laughs> 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 that's all <laughs> Be careful. I'm turning it around so I could lean actually on the podium. That's our insurance. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Um, thank you, Mr. Klopp, for, for the presentation. And, and uh, Mayor, uh, members of the commission, Brian Adler, law offices at Bills and Sunberg, 1450 Brickell Avenue, Suite 2300. Um, I'm here this evening uh, joined by uh, Matt Rosenblatt, who is the principal of GOT183, who is going to be the developer of the property. We're also joined by Jean-Francois Gervais and uh, Kevin Mandrini from Absolute Architect and Engineers, who are the uh, architects behind this beautiful project. As as um, Mr. Klopp noted, we had the opportunity to present at workshop, and we've given a lot of time and thought into the development since the workshop. We were here in, in April for the initial workshop, and as Mr. Klopp noted, uh, with the approvals in July, we are now zoned uh, RMF4, and we're designated business and office, I mean, sorry, um, medium high density residential on the comprehensive plan. So both of those hearings are now uh, have come to fruition. Um, so now what we have is the conditional use, which is the final step uh, prior to the ASPR in seeking your approval to have the, uh, the approvals that are consistent with what we've been showing for the last few months. Uh, we do appreciate the time in, in deferring the project so that we can tweak and make sure that as we go forward that we're complying with all the regulations of the city code. Um, one item at the last hearing, uh, there was an inquiry as to how long the property has been vacant. Um, I went to the property appraiser's website. Uh, you can actually go back years on the property appraiser's website and go to map view and see year by year. May of 20, uh, sorry, the 2020 property appraisal website reflected a building. The 2021 did not reflect a building. So it's only been vacant for a few years. And I bring that up because that was relevant to the traffic, et cetera, that, that, um, that we presented last time. Uh, what has changed also since the last time? So this property, and I'm just gonna, um, everyone's familiar with the location, so I'm just gonna go by that quickly. Um, we did discuss the property is, is within the smart corridor of the county. And since the last hearing, actually on September 1st, the county did adopt the RTZ ordinance uh, that is now germane to the entire county. And it provides municipalities two years to come forward with their own plan, et cetera. Um, important is we are consistent with the city's plan and the city's comprehensive plan and city zoning right now. Um, so we are, um, we are not looking at the county's program. This would be all under the city. But by adopting this type of, of, of development, it's showing the county that you, that you are looking to do things that are with, consistent with the, with, the, um, with the smart corridor and with the RTZ, and that you don't need to do a wholesale change of the city's vision in order to accomplish that. You can do it as you look at projects on a go-forward basis. Um, with regard to consistency with the other other um, buildings in the area and other developments in the area, it was said last time, and I've seen some objections written in that we're much higher density, et cetera, or, or, um, than other developments. I do want to point out the Commodore across the street is actually at 79 units per acre, and Admiral's Port, I think, is at 70 units per acre. Uh, Commodore across the street's 29 stories. So we're at 26 stories. We're not coming in at the 60 units per acre. That is the maximum that is permitted for conditional use. Um, we're coming in at 56 units per acre. Uh, this is the other smart corridor. At the zoning hearing, I did present the traffic, and this was the chart that I had presented. This illustrated the maximum that could be sought if we were to rezone and obtain conditional use approval for up to 60 units per acre. 
we're not coming in at 60 units per acre, we're at 56 units per acre. So this was the worst case scenario, and what we presented was the darker green is at 93 units. Again, we're at 86 units. The middle column is what was there from the um, prior use, the medical use that was there, and the light green column, which is what could have been built as a four-story medical office as of right under the code, not going 20 stories, not going 12 stories permitted, but would have been four stories. So at the dark green, we were the, we were, that was at 93 units. We're coming in at 86 units. So what, the only reason I'm presenting this is to show you that we're not only consistent with what we presented, but actually less impact than what we had presented in the past. Um, this is a, some pictures of what is gonna be on site, uh, including that is a basketball court that is also serves as a pickleball court. Um, so, and I know that's of interest to the city. Um, also important to note is the shadow study doesn't kick in until 10 stories adjacent to residential. So on that portion adjacent to the townhouses, that could actually cast a shadow up to 100 feet is the limit. We're not building anything above the ground level on that, on that property. There's, some, um, there's the courts, the swimming pool, and maybe the um, probably bathrooms and some other items, but we're not going higher. Um, and this is a tree-lined area, so we have taken into account the adjacent properties. It is heavily landscaped on both sides of the property adjacent to the townhouses. Um, and also, where the building is curvilinear um, above the fifth floor, so while the fifth floor pedestal is, um, is adjacent to the building, as you see by the design of the building, it actually bows away from the townhouses, and so it actually creates a further separation. Um, since the last time, we did come in and we modified the top floors uh, to comply with the shadow study, and it actually created a very unique and actually an improved, an improved development, uh, and that's green on top of there as well. So this is the iconic structure that we are seeking to bring to the city. Um, I'm not gonna go through too much more, as I, as I know you've seen this before in many different presentations with us, uh, but we have incorporated the updated uh, plans with your presentation and the updated shadow study that we comply with and has been confirmed by the city. Um, so with regard to the condition that we requested a modification of, which was with regard to the freebie, uh, and the um, so what is being um, donated is is five years worth of freebie at $72,000 a year, which on a project of 86 units is actually quite extensive. You have a transportation impact fee. This is five times the transportation impact fee in addition. Um, the reason we requested uh, for it to be moved, and actually they're looking to start sales and proceed as soon as possible, but the true impact on the city and any traffic is actually upon occupancy, which is usually staggered. So we requested that it be at TCO rather than a building permit, um, it, just from a, a, a sales and, and proceeding standpoint. Uh, with that, we thank your staff for, for working with us. Um, it's been great working with them to, to go through the modifications and to come to a project that, that is, we hope will be quite iconic for the city. Um, that court, the buildings around there were built in the 70s. This is a way of modernizing that corridor. Uh, we thank you for your time and patience through the prior hearings, and we are here for questions. So. Thank you so much, Mr. Mandel. At this time, do any members of the commission have any questions or comments? We have talked about this project quite a bit. Commissioner Dr. Linda Marks. Yes, good evening. I just had a couple of questions based on the recommended conditions of approval. And um, one of these is the traffic impact. So we have not yet received the full traffic study, correct? That's something you're going to be doing now? Uh, thank you. So we submitted a traffic analysis and a trip generation analysis, which reflects that actually the trips are much lower than was existing and, and that there is uh, ability to support. There are different levels of traffic study. I anticipate something like this at the county would request something what's called a, a, a level one traffic study. And so that is something that can be submitted as part of the ASPR as well. So. Okay. Should I turn All right. around when I... Oh. It's okay. okay. <laughs> uh, Dr. Marks, he's not... I see your back. It's fine. Okay, he's it's not okay. turning around because he's wearing a cast on one foot. And no, it's a little awkward. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I totally understand. A couple other questions. Um, and one is to... And, and the next one is to Kevin. And that is, 
I know that we have always given, uh, you know, the changes in FAR, et cetera, is based on the LEED certification. Why uh, is this building not following the rules for LEED certification? There is a resolution, Commissioner, that allows uh, other uh, environmental um, rating systems to be used. Uh, specifically approved by the City Commission is the Florida Green Building Code certification. So they are following the same rules. It's just a different certifying agency. Okay. Okay. So we already have that resolution on our books. Correct. Okay. And then I'm curious to know why uh, one of the conditions is bicycle parking, because that doesn't seem to be something that's used very much in our city. Um. <laughs> The reality is uh, that the code allows the director to request that, and I believe that more and more bicycles are going to be used in the city, and especially if you accommodate them in the new residential buildings where people will have a way to have their bicycles available to them, uh, it will make it better for them to do so. Okay, I'm, I'm not convinced that we're going to see that happen. So as long as, Kevin, you're feeling that that will be something that would happen, can we, once the building's up, it's going to be several years down the road, et cetera, et cetera. But maybe you can come back to the city and tell them whether this, real, this condition really had any meaning or not in terms of, you know, did it make a difference with the bicycle? I, I'm just thinking about, you know, I don't like putting in uh, caveats for people, you know, for builders or anybody if it's something that really may not make a difference. So again, it's not something for today because it's many years away, but I, I just wanna mention that. And then my very last question, as we have 900 people per day moving into the state of Florida and it hasn't stopped, and as traffic during the summertime, which usually is very light, is as heavy as it is during any Christmas time, I would like to know what the plans are for construction because this is, I'm understanding this street is the same street that the Williams Island residents go up and back on. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So I, I would like to know how much attention has been given to where are all the trucks parking? Are you taking a lane away from the Williams Island? Uh, you know, people who need to get in and out. I, I think that we really and truly need, I, I, I have found that our residents sometimes are very, taken aback and surprised by all of a sudden having barricades up and everything else. And no one knew about it, including the commissioners. And I would like to know if this project could be planned in advance and, uh, and shared in advance so that everyone knows and understands what's happening. And we take into account the fact that traffic is a very big challenge, especially when we take any parking or lanes away. Commissioner Marks, if I can answer that question. Yes, please. Uh, we, we will. We will have uh, when they when they get closer to uh, plan review and construction documents. There will be a formal meeting with the city, public works, the police department, all the departments to to to, to discuss and formulate an official plan that includes traffic control, parking, staging of equipment, staging of uh, materials, and to make sure that 183rd Street. Is um, remains open and obviously free of traffic, and that will be something I'd be happy to share with you. But it's it's not something that's done this early in the in the process. But it will be done sooner as um, as the, as the plans become more developed and it comes closer to that time. Okay, so then I would ask again um, to our city manager when you get to that point, And as I said, I understand this is several years away. But when you get to that point, if you would make a note, and maybe we can ask our city clerk to you know, make a note just as a reminder, let's present that so that everybody's on the same page because it's, when you start a development and already everybody's angry and upset and complaining, it just makes things so much harder. I think if we plan in advance, maybe it could be an easier way to do business. Okay. Not only plan in advance, but communicate. Thank you very much. Mr. Mandel. Adler. No, oh, I'm sorry, Adler. <laughs> no, no uh, if I may, um, Mayor, um, one, of the, one of the luxuries of having a design of a project like this on a property like this is that 
it's got the portion where we're gonna have the amenities area, and that actually is not gonna go vertical. So because of that, we actually have an area to stage equipment, parking, and other things, and then that can be developed last. So it's actually something that's a, a large benefit for, for construction as well, so. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Marks, anything else? No, thank you very much. Any other commissioners? Okay, then I'm gonna open this item for public comment. I'm gonna request members of the public to state their name and address for the record, and I'm going to advise them that they have three minutes. Anyone from the public? All right, I'm closing it for public comment, and I'm going to ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Mayor, if I could, Freeland? before you do that, I'm sorry. Just for clarification, what Commissioner Marks asked at the end about the um, construction staging plan, which is a requirement of the administrative site plan approval. Do we want to add a condition that the administrative site plan, construction staging plan, be presented to the city commission before approval? Is that what was said, or is it just for information? Yes. For approval. Doc Dr. Marks, will you clarify? I would absolutely, you know what? I would absolutely say for approval because respectfully, it, it, it will just yeah. pave the way for ease as this project begins. The applicant is asking if that can be at a workshop as a consensus? A hundred percent. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Okay, with that, if there are no further comments, I'm going to ask the city clerk for a roll call vote. Commissioner Friedland? Yes. Commissioner Joel? Yes. Commissioner Dr. Marks? Yes. Commissioner Narotsky? Yes. Commissioner Shelley? Yes. Vice Mayor Landman? Yes. And Mayor Weissman? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you very much. If I may, um, can Mr. Rosenblatt come up and just uh, express his gratitude for, for sure. working with the city? I would just like to express my gratitude. As Brian just said, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a pleasure to work in the city. I mean that genuinely from my heart. Um, from, from the onset of this project, it's really been, if I may say, easy to work here without singling any one specific department out. It's just a pleasure to work here. And uh, I look forward to hopefully bringing you more projects. So from my heart, thank you. Happy New Year to all. A good year, health, happiness, prosperity for all of us. And, and thank you again. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item nine. It's resolutions, public input. We have none tonight. So that brings us to reports. Do any of the commissioners have reports? Yes, we just had the bike event. <laughs> Anything else? No, it was a great event. Okay, so please, Vice Mayor Landman. Yeah. For everyone who's still here, um, we did have our community uh, share the road bike event with our police department, with our community advisory uh, services advisory committee volunteering, and as always, it was a great event. Our police officers were out there helping our bike riders, talking about safety, talking about community, and I'm sure we'll do it again. But thank you for everyone who showed up, and it was really a, a nice event. Thank you. Looking, anybody else? Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Dr. March. I would just ask that we get a report at our next meeting. I, I believe, do we have a workshop this month? Yes, right? Yes. Okay. It would be very nice to know what's happening for Veterans Day so that we might be able to mark our calendars accordingly with times, etc. We'll have it for the workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Narotsky. Uh, regarding Veterans Day, it's actually Friday the 13th, I believe it is, right? Or the 11th? No, it's the 11th. Friday the so 11th, the 11th. At, 10, at 10 a.m. here. Right, Ron? That was the time. We're planning yeah. that time. 10 a.m. We'll go over the event, you know, how, how it's going to be. They play. do all this, the anthems and everything. <laughs> Trumpet players and... Bagpipes, the whole, yeah. Okay. We did, we did lose. Um, I do have one item that may be important to all of you. On the ballot will be an item um, for approval of a referendum that will increase taxes by a... 1% to 
to be able to give teachers a raise in their salary. Now, I can't tell you how to vote. I can only tell you that this will be on the ballot and to please make yourselves aware and do your homework about it. Um, this is what I call referendum 2.0. This includes all charter schools. Um, anyone, any questions, thoughts, or additional comments? I probably should say it'll be the very last item on the ballot, and I have no way of knowing how long the ballot is now, so please just share that information. Mayor? I... Uh, yes, why don't you? And regarding the referendum, there is a town hall in, uh, in the northeast area of our community that is coming up. Thursday. Thursday at 11, 11 a.m. at Mady Ives K-8 Center. If anyone wants to attend, if you want to tell parents to attend, if you want to tell anybody who is interested. And there will probably be media at this event. Okay. Mayor, can I, can I just yes. sort of clarify for the record, uh, with respect to ballot questions, individual elected officials can offer their opinions. Um, we've been advised by the governor's office not to. Not to, okay. <laughs> so. Okay, fair enough. I will just yield to what Oh, no, if the governor's office says that, then that's fine. But that's interesting to know, so everybody be advised. It's, it's actually. <laughs> in it's, your spheres of influence. It's actually in state statute that you're allowed to do that, so it's curious the governor's saying that you can't. Send me the statute. Okay. You know I love to be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, any other items from the commission? Okay, then I'm going to open this meeting for public comment, and I'm going to ask the city attorney to review with the commission members the purpose of this item. Uh, very briefly, Mayor, thank you. So uh, any speaker who wants to speak about something within the jurisdiction of the city can come up and speak for three minutes. It's not a time to have a dialogue uh, from the dais with the speaker, but to listen to the, uh, the speaker's comments. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any, um, let me open it for public comment, and I'm going to remind you to state your name and address for the record, and I'm going to advise you that you have three minutes. Is there anyone from the public that would like to address this commission? Okay, then I'm closing this section of the agenda. There is no other business. I want to, on behalf of the entire commission, offer prayers for the victims of Ian. And please look on the city website. The city may be doing some drives to get food, water, and other essentials over to the West Coast. We will let you know as that materializes. And I, too, want to wish everyone, on behalf of all of the commission, a happy Shana Tova and an easy fast. Can I have a motion for adjournment? Made by Commissioner Narotsky, seconded by Commissioner Joel. Anyone opposed? No. Meeting is adjourned. Oh, Recording stop.